Let us pray. Father, we still our hearts before you this morning as we've gathered together in your name to bow down before you, to worship you, and to hear from your word. We pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd breathe life into these words. Speak to us in a new way. Give us hearts and minds that are willing to listen to your words and of all to put it into practice in our lives. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. When we look at the world around us, we see an awful amount of violence done against women. Our own country still has a patriarchal attitude where women are subjugated and abused. You know, just a few days ago, we saw some graphic visuals of a young Muslim woman who was heckled in a college for wearing a hijab by about 50 male students wearing their saffron in Karnataka. Almost every day there is violence against women, which sometimes gets reported and on most occasions does not even make it to the media. And this is not only in our society, but also in our own Christian community. We hear of slogans like, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. But all this does not seem to have any serious effect on the collective conscience of our nation. Either we have just do lip service to save the girl child and allow her to study, but we don't really engage with it seriously. Today's sun uh, is marked as Septuagesima Sunday, meaning the 70th, that is 70 days before Easter. This also marks a time of preparation for the 40 days of fasting during Lent. And this morning I would like us to look at the theme that God created men and women to be joint heirs of the kingdom. God created men and women to be joint heirs of the kingdom. In the first chapter of Genesis, we have an account of the creation of human beings. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then God said to them, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. When we look at the passage, we see that sexuality is part of God's good design. Human beings as male and female is part of God's design. Three fundamental truths come out of this passage. Namely that God made and makes human beings in his own image. That God made and continues to make the male and female giving the task of reproducing, that he gave and he gives them dominion over the earth and its creatures. So right from the beginning, the design was both male and female. Both of them shared in the divine image and both were given authority to rule over the earth. There is no distinction here among the sexes that either of them were more like God or that either sex was more responsible for the earth than the other. Their resemblance to God and their stewardship of the earth were from the beginning equally shared since both sexes were equally created by God and like God. And in verse 27 of chapter 1, there is a 
threefold affirmation that God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him and finally spells it out more specifically male and female he created them in making human beings as male and female and declaring that they were made in the image of God there is definitely a declaration that there must be within the being of God himself something which corresponds to the feminine and the masculine in human kind so genesis 1 clearly affirms the fundamental equality of the sexes whatever is essentially human is both male and female and reflects the divine image equally born by male and female male and female are equally called to rule over the earth and to cooperate with the creator in the development of its resources and for the common good however we see that the reality of this equality was distorted by the fall in genesis 3 after adam and eve's disobedience we see that the fall affected their relationship the sentence of god on adam and eve's disobedience affected their relationship with each other the word to eve was your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you there was a certain element of alienation between them in the place of equality and complementarity one would now rule over the other the domination of women by men is due to the fall and was not part of god's good design in creation so in genesis 1 we see how god creates them equal men and women in his image in genesis 2 we see the complementary aspects of both sexes let us look at the record in genesis 2 genesis 2:18 says The Lord God said it is not right it is not good for the man to be alone I will make a helper suitable for him And now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air he brought them to the man to see what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creature that was its name So the man gave names to all the livestock the birds of the air and all the beasts of the field but for adam no suitable helper was found so the lord god caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh then the lord god made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man the man said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh throughout genesis 1 we see that the standard comment after every act of creation was that it was good and genesis 131 says god saw all that he had made and it was very good <clears throat> God's evaluation of all his work was that it was very good. However, by the time we come to Genesis 2:18, God says that there is one thing in creation which is not good. God says it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. two comments need to be made here though god had created everything and had passed his verdict on them as being very good he was still not happy with man being alone therefore he says it's not good for man to be alone i will make him a help as his partner and so we see that the hebrew phrase is translated in many ways king james says i will make him and help me for him then i we says i will make a helper suitable for him 
new king james i will make him a helper comparable to him rsv says i will make him a helper fit for him and nrsv says i will make him a helper as his partner now actually the hebrew term is a has a various shades of meaning it could mean that which is opposite that which corresponds to ezer ke negado like as opposite in front of him corresponding the idea that is expressed through this phrase is that the one whom god was going to create had to be a companion a helper one who would be a partner yet would be different he would complement adam the concept of being made in god's image will be completely displayed in human sexuality both male and female together the hebrew words make it clear that both of them male and female were different yet they together formed humanity genesis 2 shows that the equality shown in genesis 1 does not mean that they are identical but rather that they are complementary eve was taken out of adam's ribs and brought to him matthew henry commenting on this 300 years ago says that she was not made out of his head to top him nor out of his feet to be trampled by him but out of his side to be equal to him under his arm to be protected and near his heart to be loved Peter Lombard a bishop of Paris in about AD 1157 says in the book of sentences that Eve was not taken from the feet of Adam to be his slave nor from his head to be his lord but from his side to be his partner even though god knows that adam is alone all the animals are brought before him to see if there was any possible companion among the created beings so far all the animals and birds were brought before him and adam names them but no suitable helper was found finally the lord causes adam to go into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping took one of the ribs and made a woman she is then brought to adam adam is ecstatic when he meets eve and then bursts into poetry this this time is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh this shall be called woman for from man was taken this so here we notice the beginning of love poetry adam was overwhelmed with what god had created and brought before him that he breaks into song and the narrator continues that for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh we see that in the new testament reading as well today where when jesus is questioned about divorce he refers back to this passage for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh so two two clear aspects come from genesis 1 and 2 that human beings men and women are made in god's image human beings are equal in god's sight men and women are equal before god's sight human beings male and female <coughs> complement one another so we see these key teachings in scripture you know the word is which means a helper or a partner is normally used of god in the old testament so we see here it is not an ordinary word a helper sometimes in our you know idea when we read the word helper we think somebody who comes to the house and helps cleaning the house or cooking and so on that is not the word here the the word which is normally used of god himself is the word used for eve and so we notice from both genesis 1 and 2 that both male and female were created equal in god's eyes and male and female were to complement each other and because of the fall we see 
the curse your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you and part of this fallen nature leads us towards this domination of women by men in our own country the sex ratio is fairly skewed the 2011 census of india revealed that there were 914 girls per 1000 boys in the 0 to 6 group across india the worst hit states in india are haryana with 830 punjab with 846 jammu and kashmir with 859 delhi has 923 girls per 1000 males and has decreased from 942 in the 2001 census the report suggests that over 19 million girl children are aborted in india if this is the situation in our country and in our city it is also true of the church many families abort female children because they see it as a liability these deliberate killing of children who are yet to be born will be called to account by god so as a church how do we affirm the life of female children not just beti bachao beti padao but really engaging with this issue to make sure that girl children are given the right to live not a single minute goes when a girl is not raped or experiences domestic violence or become spray in the hands of the perpetrators of violence now delhi has the dubious distinction of being named as the rape capital of india and it is in this kind of a context we as the church are called to bring about change and we need to bring about this change from within ourselves first in many families within the church there is domestic violence men beating their wives just subjugating them shouting and screaming and violating them and it is within the church we see there is always a preference for the boy child how do we educate our own people to bring about this change to show that both men and women a joint heirs in the kingdom of god we are called to proclaim this news in a patriarchal society we see odd comments from our politicians about why women should not dress like this or that rather than minding their own business a lot of people argue for stricter laws and severe punishment in order to bring about change however all this will not help us because the human heart is deceitful and above all cure the only way any real change can take place is when there is a change of heart the conversion of saint paul is an excellent example of this a man who went about destroying people was touched by god and was transformed so radically that he went around saving people from eternal destruction paul writing to the galatians says so in christ jesus you are all children of god through faith for all of you who are baptized into christ have clothed yourself with christ there is neither jew nor gentile neither slave nor free nor is there male and female for you are all one in Christ Jesus if you belong to Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise paul is bringing out this principle that we are all in Christ we are all children of god through faith in Jesus Christ and if we are children of god then there should be no distinctions there is neither jew or gentile no slave or free no male or female for we are all one in jesus christ 
and so we need to remind ourselves that god created men and women to be joint heirs of the kingdom and this is the message that the church has to proclaim to our society but unfortunately within the church itself we fail to proclaim this news that god has created men and women to be joint heirs of the kingdom jesus also taught us which we heard in the gospel reading that men and women are equal in god's sight and that life is important in the sight of god and he is the only one who has the authority to give and take life if god has created men and women to be joint heirs of the kingdom then the church being the body of christ must be the first to reflect this and so we are challenged this morning as members of green park free church as members of the body of christ to affirm life to let the girl children live and to treat women as joint heirs of the kingdom of god may god truly give us the strength that both within our own families within the church family that we would set examples showing that men and women are joint heirs of the kingdom of god god bless you all let us pray father we still our hearts before you this morning and we thank you that you've called men and women to be joint heirs of your kingdom in father very often in our country in our society there is a patriarchal attitude with women being subjugated and women being abused and father we pray that you would bring about change in our hearts begin with us begin with the church families that truly lord that domestic violence would stop that abortion of female feticide would stop and that the l- girl children would be led to live that they would get an education that they would get a life and i pray lord that the church would proclaim this first so continue to be with us bless us and use us all for the extension of your kingdom for this we pray in jesus name amen